So in this lecture we're going to see some terminologies used in the C language. Okay, I already told you about this uh, this line. Okay, the include the standard input output dot h. It is a header file, right? So it is also called as preprocessor directives. Okay, so why it is preprocessor? Because before compilation of this whole source code, you need to preprocess the data from the header files. Okay, so in this lecture, also we're going to see the what are the return types possible in a in a uh, function. So you know that we write a void main function, or let's say we also may write int. Okay, and for the int, you need to return something, so you write zero. But if you don't want to write any return statement, it is also fine. It is fine for the main function, but not for the other function as well. But if you write void function, let's say void return type, then you, uh, it is not necessary to write the return statement, but you may write in this way. Return, and then blank. Uh, you can just leave a space here. Okay, or you may also eliminate the space. So what about this one? It is a function, right? So it is a function definition. Definition means we want to write the actual code in this function. So here, the, the, this long, uh, along with this unsigned short int, is a, one of the return types that is used in the C language. So don't worry about it, I will tell you about this. For now, let's say it is a simple integer. It is returning a sum of these two numbers, m and n, okay? And it is a returning integer. So, so some people may ask this m and this n is uh, similar of this uh, variables that are used in this main function. Like for example, if I write int mm, m and n here and I write uh, let's say m equals to 8 and n equals to 3 and I've, if I pass this to m comma n here so is this m and n is similar to that of m and n in the other function. These two functions are different. Then this m and n is also different. So we can say that this m and n are different for these two blocks of functions. And also there's a lot of question about this. Why should not we write here in this way? So if I do it is uh, actually uh, fine, but it is uh, it is uh, going to give you some warning by the compiler. Let's see if I compile this statement, there are going to be some error. Okay, there's some error is about the M and N. Okay, it is fine. Don't worry about this. I'm not going about this uh, concern. I'm not concerned about this. I'm concerned about this. Why we should not write here function? Okay, see the conflict types is going to declare here. So to avoid this warning we have to use a prototype. I need to copy the entire code here see, up till here okay and then just write the return types of this or oh, just return type data types float here okay and then place a semicolon here. So float float here, float and float here. You need not assign any variable to it. Okay, so it is a prototype here. Now let's compile it and see if there's any error. No error. So this statement, this statement is called as function declaration or prototype. Okay, so this is function definition where the main code is written and it is a declaration of this function. See, if you use a variable a and B here so it is declared here right and if you use a function you need to declare above okay in the global space so why not use this uh, this uh, integer here it is also fine if you write integer a equals to 8 and B equals to 3 it is also going to work okay but if I uh, use here in this local uh, function main function so the value of a is coming from this function from this variable not from here if I place here 5 the answer to this problem would be 8 okay 
So let's check it out. See, it is sum is 8. So the variable values is coming from in the local variable, not from the global. If I declare that there is no such variable here, so the value of A and B will come from here. Okay? So here it's going to be 11 because 8 and 3 would sum up to get 11. So these variables, which are in the global space, is known as the global variables. Okay, it is outside the function, so you can say that the variables which are written outside the function is called the global variables. Okay, and also uh, let's uh, talk about this function here. Uh, if I write uh, a variable, let's say float or any, let's say there's an integer here, integer c, let's say, and you want to add the c even. Okay, so if you let this prototype as this okay so it will be an error so let's check this if there's an error yes conflicting types error so to avoid this you need to also add integer so you cannot uh, let it happen in this format so you need to apply a sense that these variables or data type should match with this data type in the main function definition and also is in prototype. So now the main purpose of this uh, uh, this program is to uh, say you about the number of return types possible. For example, you can also use long, okay, and also you can use uh, uh, many unsigned integers, unsigned int, unsigned short as if. So there is a diagram I have uh, created for you. So by this diagram you will be able to uh, identify whether a return type is possible or not. Here's the diagram. Okay, so it is a kind of a diagram where we have oval circles and uh, you can start with the long data type here and you can have long long int okay as a data type. Okay. Uh, you can you may have uh, long long unsigned then you can have the integer because the arrow is going from here to here okay and just follow the arrows right so if you follow the arrows you will going to guess what can be the uh, data type possible see return type can be long double long uh, see hexadecimal and octal is not there in our Dave C++ okay so also you can you may have uh, long long signed then int right and you may start with a short if you start with a short short unsigned int can be possible or short signed int can be possible okay or you may write a solitary float okay and also you may write um, long double with having this format specifier as LF okay or you can just start with long uh, int long signed uh, then int or you may stop here even okay it doesn't matter that uh, you have to stop at integer it doesn't matter like this but you may stop here long signed okay and uh, just follow the diagram here right so you get it for this purpose I'm taking you to a program so here the purpose of this program is to uh, tell you how to use the uh, size of the data type okay so what you're gonna do is print f in integer you need to print so it is a signed integer right it is signed you can also uh, pronounce it as decimal but it is signed because we generate decimal in signed and unsigned way for example minus 3 minus 4 or 6 7 8 like this okay so size of operator and you can just close it and now let's check the size of integer in our case okay so let's compile it is giving no errors and it's 4 okay in our system the integer size is 4 Okay, now let's check the long. 
oh, sorry about this uh, compilation it is also for and let's say um, long long int what is the size of this data type is 8 okay fine and let's check the long double it's 16 okay great so by this method you can check which of the data type is possible by experimenting with this uh, diagram I've shown you okay this diagram so just uh, in your system just practice which of the uh, data type is possible right so just follow the arrows right if you start with the short so one thing I forgot to mention here is this arrow is showing you the starting point from where you may start right so here also you can see that there's a float so you may start with the float but you cannot reach any of them so don't worry about it so only float is written with uh, nothing else so here also you may start with a short short yeah, short can be followed by unsigned and then int the last stop is integer here okay so let's check this short unsigned int right short unsigned int let's check this one and it should give me some answer okay two two bytes is allocated for this data type right you may use this okay some so let's uh, talk about now the type operator used as a unary operation so what does this mean here is let's say a variable is having a uh, integer data type but you need to answer it in float so what you're gonna do is so let's me give an example here let's say it is an integer let's say a equals to 5 and you need to print it in in, in float right so float uh, value of a so there should be a problem here uh, I think because let's compile it I will show you the problem he's uh, see some problem is here see I was printing 5 but it is not showing 5 anymore so there's a problem here and this kind of problem is a type casting problem so you need to add a float in front of a do you understand this a float in front of a will convert this a into float and a is here is integer so it will convert it to float so let's check now okay see 5 has appeared here so you can you can say that we are doing the correct method okay by this you may convert uh, data type into any format right so also you may use a long long end okay so let's check this okay there's a problem here also why there's a problem because we are uh, type casting to integer but we are placing the format specifier for a float value so it is not possible right so also use the appropriate format specifier to uh, to print your data in the uh, console right 